Today on PGTV News, there's still time for you to get assistance if you've lost your job due to the coronavirus. Stay tuned to find out how. And Lakeland has a way for you to give back to the community. That's all ahead on PGTV News. Welcome to PGTV News, I'm Steve Barnes. And I'm Tina Mann. In its first week, a new Polk County program approved almost $2 million in grants to businesses and individuals harmed by the COVID-19 economic shutdown. The County Commission established the program called Polk Cares 2020 using $126 million it received under the CARES Act. That $2.2 trillion federal aid package was passed by Congress in March to help the U.S. economy rebound from the shutdown. The Commission allocated $40 million for small business relief, offering companies employing 25 people or fewer up to $5,000 for their virus-related losses. $30 million was earmarked for grants of up to $2,000 to households to help with living expenses such as rent or mortgage payments and utility bills. Polk Cares began taking applications on May 19th. As of Wednesday, the household program has been more active. There are 5,868 applications in progress and 1,089 completed applications pending approval. These figures come from the county's Health and Human Services Division, which is operating that part of the program. The county has issued more than $1.2 million to 621 households. The Polk County Clerk of Courts Office has rejected 324 applications so far. Reasons for rejections included household income that exceeded the program's $75,000 annual income cap or multiple applications per household. For more information about the Polk Cares program, visit polk-county.net slash Polk Cares 2020. It's good to see the money being divvied out. Right, and they mm -hmm. worked quick on that. They really did. They got the allocation, they made the decision, and within a couple of days, they were already issuing yeah. checks. And of course, it's it's important to note, you know, keep the applications coming. There, the the money is is going quickly, but uh, as you as you heard, the you know, a lot of applications are being denied because they don't qualify. So that right. money might stay out there a little bit longer. Right, and especially for small businesses, it's important because mm -hmm. they're having a harder time getting the word out to them to um, apply for assistance. So right. I know that Joe Tedder recently sent out to all 20,000 small businesses in the area some correspondence about it. So if anybody's out there who has a small yeah. business, they need to look at Well, a Lakeland Healthcare Center has been designated as a recovery site for COVID-19 patients. Oak Bridge Healthcare Center in Lakeland is one of five facilities chosen by Florida's Agency for Healthcare Administration as COVID-dedicated nursing centers. The facility in South Lakeland now has 21 residents who have tested positive for COVID-19, according to the latest report from the Florida Department of Health. As Oak Bridge shifted to caring for patients recovering from COVID-19, all the other residents were moved to other centers. The COVID positive patients at Oak Bridge do not require hospital care, but do need isolation to safely recover before going back to their regular nursing homes. Oak Bridge has up to 120 beds available. The AHCA statement said, giving it the second largest capacity of the five facilities that have made similar agreements with the state. The other centers designated are Jacksonville, Pensacola, Port Charlotte, and Lauderhill. This is definitely much needed. Mm -hmm. um, most of our deaths here in Polk County have been related to nursing right. homes. So being able to isolate the patients and, and get them out of that environment where they risk reinfecting people. Right, and the big thing is, is, is you know, not every case of COVID rises to the level of needing that hospitalization and nursing homes are better equipped to handle that in between right. area and keep the hospital beds for the people who really need it exactly. and keep them away from the, the healthy people. Mm -hmm. so. 
A recent letter to the governor from the Polk County School Board requested $13 billion in federal coronavirus pandemic relief funds and a request to veto a $404.5 million increase in retirement system contribution from school districts. Polk County would be expected to contribute $34 million, money that would otherwise be used to pay employee salaries, buy more laptops, provide mental health services for students, and provide help for homeless and special education students in the next school year. This school year, which ends June 30th, is already fully funded. The board also discussed an additional $9 million the district will have to start paying each year into the Florida Retirement System for its employees following a change in the percentages of contributions for everyone from the custodial staff to the superintendent. In total, districts around the state will be contributing an additional $404.5 million to the retirement system because the system's investment fund isn't seeing a rate of return comparable to previous years and teachers are living longer. Superintendent Jacqueline Byrd, along with six other large school district superintendents in the state, will be sending letters to Governor Ron DeSantis asking him to veto the Florida retirement system increases. This is definitely a blow to yeah. the school system if that passes. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, they had just finished negotiations with contracts and things like that, and now to, to realize that there's going to be this huge deficit in the retirement system, you know. It's going to be a tough, tough decision, um, obviously for the teachers, not having to pay more into the retirement system would be beneficial, but um, where that money is going to come from, it's hard to say. Yes. A tax holiday is going on right now, and that can save you money on purchases you need to prepare for the next hurricane or other disaster. The 2020 Disaster Preparedness Sales Tax Holiday was passed by the Florida Legislature and signed into law by Governor Ron DeSantis. The sales tax holiday began on Friday and goes through Thursday, June 4th. During this sales tax holiday period, qualifying items related to disaster preparedness are exempt from sales tax. However, the sales tax holiday does not apply to the rental or repair of any of the qualifying items. Additionally, the sales tax holiday does not apply to sales in a theme park, entertainment complex, public lodging establishment, or an airport. For more information and a list of qualifying items, visit floridarevenue.com slash disaster prep. Well, each year we have these hurricane uh, tax holidays to encourage people to prepare for the impending storms. It's important. I mean, mm -hmm. we've already had two named storms before the actual official start of the hurricane season. And now we're all, all the way in. So yeah. people need to go ahead and stock up. And this is a great time to save 7% on everything. And right. a lot of the time, stores will run corresponding sales as well to get people out and get people actually wanting to buy these things. Let's just hope there's no runs on toilet paper. I sure hope not. <laughs> the City of Lakeland and Lakeland Electric are launching a new project to help low-income seniors and disabled members of the community. Lakeland Electric is partnering with the Catholic Charities of Central Florida to launch Project CARE, a voluntary program for Lakeland Electric customers to donate to while paying their own electric bill. COVID-19 has greatly impacted our community. Some Lakelanders have been hit harder than others. So the question is now, how can we help? Project CARE is a program that was developed by Lakeland Electric in partnership with the Catholic Charities of Central Florida to assist our low-income seniors and the disabled by paying their utility bill. There are three ways to donate. A one-time donation, selecting a monthly amount, or participating in the Roundup program, which rounds up your utility bill to the next dollar, never exceeding 99 cents a month. For more information, call Lakeland Electric or visit the website on the screen. Remember, together, your small change will make a big difference. Well, this is a great idea, I think. I you know, being able to join up and partner up with Lakeland Electric, you know, they put out so much mailing throughout the month. I mean, it's a, it's a smart decision to partner up with that. The reach just gets extended so much further. Right, and it's one of our most vulnerable populations we're helping, so yep, it's awesome. Absolutely. Well, Lakeland PD is now accepting applications for the 2020 Citizens Police Academy. While the Citizens Police Academy doesn't prepare graduates for a beat on the street, it does include detailed information on police topics such as uniformed patrol, 
Special Investigations, Crime Scene Investigation, SWAT, K-9, and many other areas of interest. Also included in the curriculum is a tour of the police station and communication center. There's also a firearms familiarization course during which participants will be given a chance to test their skills at the firing range. This in-depth academy runs for 15 consecutive weeks with classes meeting every Thursday night from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. starting on August 6th. Applicants must be at least 18 years of age. You do not have to reside within the city of Lakeland to be accepted. You can apply for the academy at lakelandgov.net slash LPD. 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 Well, I know that there's multiple, you know, municipalities around here who do something mm -hmm. similar. Yep. Um, I know Bartow right here does their own Citizens Academy, and it really gives people a chance to experience law enforcement from the inside. It gives them better, you know, knowledge of what goes on and how much law enforcement really does. Yeah, yeah and, and for, those, for those younger folks that are interested in a career like this, it's a great career, but it's a very demanding career, so this gives them an opportunity to get an inside look at what it's gonna really take to be a, a law officer. Absolutely. More than 60% of households in the United States have responded to the 2020 census, but if you haven't responded yet, you still have time. The director of the U.S. Census Bureau has more information for you. Hello, I am Steve Dillingham, director of the U.S. Census Bureau. When we planned the 2020 census, we wanted to make it easier than ever for households to respond by going online, by phone, or by mail. To date, I am pleased to report that more than 60% of the nation's households, approximately 89 million, have responded. Thank you, America, for keeping us on track. But we're not done yet. Now, we need your help to meet the final goal of counting all people in the United States. Responding to the 2020 census is something you can do while safe at home and practicing social distancing, all without requiring a census taker to visit your home. Even if you have already responded, please encourage your family, friends, and social networks to complete the census at 2020census.gov. They also can respond by phone or simply mailing back a paper questionnaire. Together, we will fulfill our constitutional and civic duty to count everyone in all communities across our vast and diverse nation. Thank you, and please stay safe, everyone. Well, while many teachers and students are finding a new balance in online learning, one elementary teacher has cast her students in a virtual play. Hello. My name is William Shakespeare, and welcome to the Globe Theater. Lois Horn Diaz, a teacher at R. Bruce Wagner Elementary, is known for casting her gifted students in creative productions of Shakespeare plays. Last year, they tackled Macbeth, and this year, it's a special pandemic, Shakespeare in the Zoom, the version of Romeo and Juliet. If you're not a big fan of the Bard's work, you might still want to watch this version. One of the early clashes between the Capulets and the Montagues is set to the 1974 classic Kung Fu Fighting. My sword, I say, old Montague has come. Now go and Capulet, hold me not, let me go. You want some of me? Yeah, I dare you. Everybody was Kung Fu The dialogue is a mix of Shakespeare's original work and contemporary speech. The production was pieced together using dozens of individual Zoom recordings. Students and their families had to learn lines, create costumes, and build green screen sets, all while social distancing. As part of their lessons, the students also learned how, to, uh, learned how Shakespeare created some of his most important works while in quarantine during outbreaks of the plague. I just love this. This is yeah. so much fun to me. I grew up with some amazing teachers who instilled a love of Shakespeare and his plays for me. And I love that they're bringing this to an elementary level 
where they're teaching them about, I mean, he's what, from the 14th century? Mm -hmm. We, I mean, and his works are still revered today. Right, well, and, and, and in this case, it's not just about the, the art form the way it's normally done, they're also using other art forms, recording their videos and, and right. using technology to perform them. I think this is an incredible idea. Agreed. Well, thanks for watching PGTV News. The board review is coming up. But first, even though most end of the school year activities have been canceled, here are a few families who didn't let their high school students miss out on prom. Take a look. <laughs> oh, romance, when the last little star has left the sky, will we still be together with our arms around each other? And will you still be my romance? On the clear understanding, that this kind of thing can happen. Shall we dance? Shall we dance? Shall we dance? Did you sing your prom? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome to the Board Review with news about your county government. I'm your host, Trisha Pichette. 
Today you'll learn about County Commission actions from the May 19, 2020 board meeting. Polk County has a new building director. Benjamin Dunn was confirmed as the county's new building director Tuesday. Dunn's appointment is effective starting June 1st and he will be paid about $110,000 a year. Dunn comes to Polk with about 20 years of experience in local government and agency experience in building permit administration, economic development, land use planning, transportation planning, zoning, development review, code enforcement, housing, and tourism. He was most recently the Development Services Department Director at Highland County Board of County Commissioners. The board approved a construction contract with Universal Contracting of Florida LLC to replace the roof on the Frank B. Smith Building in East Bartow. The project will cover about 18,000 square feet of roof and is expected to cost about $288,750. Upgrades are coming to 37 lift stations around the county following an approval of a work order by the board Tuesday. Curry Controls Company was awarded a nearly $2 million contract to provide supervisory control and data acquisition upgrades for these lift stations. The modification to the lift stations will allow for improved remote communications and reduce the cost of maintaining obsolete equipment. The board approved an infrastructure agreement with Ernie Caldwell Properties, LLC, that will provide for the design, permitting, and construction of the utility main extensions in the Bowen Road corridor and the wastewater infrastructure improvements in the Ernie Caldwell Boulevard corridor. This agreement addresses the cost share for these utility improvements, along with the upsizing potable water and reclaimed water in the Ernie Caldwell Boulevard corridor to serve proposed and future development in the area. In a separately approved infrastructure agreement with AK Oakmont LLC, the company will be responsible for off-site potable water and reclaimed water main extensions in the Bowen Road corridor prior to a certificate of occupancy being issued for the project. A three-year contract with Peace River Center for Personal Development, Inc. for outpatient behavioral health services that provides for on-site and telehealth to qualified low-income county residents was approved by the board. In its first year, the contract will not exceed $291,241. In the second and third years, the contract will not exceed $430,000 annually. A contract with Tri-County Human Services, Inc. for outpatient behavioral health services that provides for on-site and telehealth to qualified low-income county residents was approved by the board. In its first year, this contract will not exceed $422,045. In the second and third years, the contract will not exceed $700,000 annually. The board approved a $2 million agreement with Rivertown Diagnostics to provide COVID-19 antigen and antibody testing. The testing will focus on Polk's frontline workers and prioritize them for testing. The board also held several public hearings on a variety of items. Those items up for consideration included the first public hearing was held, but no action was taken on a proposed Land Development Code text amendment to change a portion of, the, of Chapter 4 of the Northridge Selected Area Plan Development Design Standards and Requirements, along with density regulation tables in the Regional Activity Center, to remove the need for bonus points to achieve residential density in that designation and allow density in the residential medium to go below the base. The board voted not to transmit a proposed large-scale comprehensive plan amendment along the old Polk City Road area. The board transmitted a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment to change the future land use designation on about 80 acres from agricultural residential rural in the rural development area to residential low in the urban growth area. Well, that wraps up this edition of the Board Review. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We encourage you to watch us at the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020. I'm Trisha Pichette. 
Thanks for watching.